Hello friends, this is Growl. In this video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know to play Evoker in Mythic Plus Dungeons for the War Within. Evoker is an incredibly fun healer that I've been enjoying throughout testing this expansion, and I made sure to play it a ton and wait just before release so that this guide is as accurate as it can be. If you're new to the channel, I'm Growl. I've been pushing high keys as a healer since the start of BFA. I've been near the top of the leaderboards for almost every season, and I've also placed top 5 in MDI and Great Push Global Finals. If you're looking for beginner or advanced healer content, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. I also have a full UI installer as well as some behind the scenes stuff available for Patreon and Twitch subscribers with a link in the description. Evoker is a casting healer with a powerful burst AoE healing potential, alongside some really, really cool situational utility. Its spells are pretty straightforward, but utilizing your combos and synergies to their max effectiveness adds a ton of depth to the class. Our main healing spell with this current dungeon build is Spirit Bloom. It's an empowered spell that will heal more allies the longer it's charged. Empowered spells are a feature unique to Evoker. They're essentially a longer cast time spell, but they can be interrupted along the way and you still get partial benefits of the spell depending on how long you charge. This can be used if you suddenly have to get out of a dangerous ability or you can short charge it on purpose if you choose. For example, Dream Breath is an AoE heal, which does the same amount of healing regardless of how long you empower it. It does a heal over time effect along with an upfront heal. The longer you empower it, the bigger the upfront heal, but the shorter the heal over time. I often like to use just a single empower level with my Dream Breath to get a large heal over time. However, I can choose to fully empower it in an emergency. I'm not going to go too in depth until the rotation guide. I just wanted to give you a quick sample on how some of the abilities work. Let's get into your character setup and talents first. For stat priority, early on the most important thing is item level. As a healer, the more stats you can get, the better. I'd only worry about which stats you're using if you're debating between two pieces of equal item level. Personally, I would recommend getting haste to about 15%, then prioritizing crit first, then verse, and then finally mastery. Haste is a stat that doesn't particularly synergize well with our abilities. However, as a healer, it's important that we have a baseline of haste in order to react quickly to situations and to get the spells out that we need. This is just an entirely preferential level. You may decide to go higher or lower depending on what you see fit. Next, crit is a great all-around stat. It's, in my opinion, your best stat. It also improves the duration of your heal over time abilities. Any extra stats after crit, we prefer to go into versatility. It further improves our damage and gives us a little bit of survivability. Lastly, there's mastery. Mastery is actually an incredibly powerful healing stat, but it doesn't do much else, so I choose not to prioritize it due for how flexible ability is important in dungeons. When it comes to trinkets as preservation, you're mainly looking for big stat boosters. A solid trinket that's easy to farm is the Unbound Changeling from Mists of Tirna Scythe. You can change the stat buff it gives by eating food of that type, so it's just an overall good choice for whatever stat you need. As a secondary trinket, I'd recommend the Empowering Crystal. This one's another easy to farm stat stick from dungeons. This one's from Dawnbreaker. There's several honorable mention trinkets like Spy Master's Web and Gale of Shadows. These are trinkets that have properties that you might have to play around and also require some more aggressive use of your DPS spells. I wouldn't recommend them to a beginner. However, once you start to feel comfortable, you may want to experiment with these and I would give other stuff a try. There may be some things that are actually more powerful than we initially think early on in the expansion. As for talents, there's a few options, but I'm going to go over my main build that I'd recommend for dungeon healing using the Chrono Warden hero talents. On the class tree, the main goal is to get to some of the really powerful nodes near the end, namely Leaping Flames, Lush Growth, and Zephyr. Many of the other nodes come totally down to preference. You may decide that you want increased hover length or an extra stun or more charges. You can't really go wrong in the class tree, but you do end up having to give a little bit in return. If you're needing to bring specific things and you don't know what to take out. The first things I would remove is probably these middle left talents that simply just give increased magic damage. On the spec side of the tree, there's a lot less choice since some of the nodes are incredibly important. First, in the bottom right, you need to path to Timeless Magic, but any of the three talents that you go to it are okay. Time of Need is the best healing output option. Then you have Energy Loop. You can use that if you're running out of mana in dungeons. And then Rewind Cooldown Reduction might be good on like certain bosses, but situationally, I'd mostly recommend Time of Need as a default. In the top part of the tree, you really have very little choice with the talent. The node under Emerald 
communion. Technically, you could have either of these. I think Rush of Vitality gives more healing, but in dungeons, I'd rather just have Dreamwalker since you don't know if you're going to have a hover charge to be able to move with your Emerald Communion. If you're looking for extra damage options, you may look to try and get these two points in flow state on the middle right side of the tree. However, this will come at a significant cost to your healing. You'll either have to drop Call of Ysera or Temporal Anomaly. I wouldn't really recommend this for most dungeons, but you may see some higher level evokers opting for this in some situations. As we'll go over soon, Call of Ysera and TA can be vital to your huge AoE healing. If you really need a point somewhere, I think honestly getting rid of Life Spark at the very bottom of the tree is the right choice. This is a very fun talent to play around, but honestly, its rate of proccing seems pretty low, and I don't think you're really losing that much damage or healing. Hello friends, post-editing Growl here. While I was working on this guide after the game's release, some of the interactions with Call of Ysera were removed and this talent became a little bit worse for healing. It's still pretty good, however, you might see more evoker healers and high keys trying the Temporal Anomaly plus Flow State build for damage. I still think for most pug keys, you'd rather have Call of Ysera, and if you want a little bit more AoE healing, you may want to take that extra point that's currently in Life Spark and place it in Renewing Breath instead. I'd recommend experimenting with both setups since flow state can be pretty fun and just seeing which one you prefer. For the hero talent tree, I use Chrono Warden for dungeons. The capstone node produces three living flames every time you use an empowered spell, and this is a huge portion of your passive healing. The other nodes are also just incredibly powerful. For the choice nodes of the tree, I use Temporality, Double Time, and Instability Matrix. The Double Time node can be swapped for Time Convergence if you want a little bit more healing to get that intellect buff. You just have to be a little bit smarter using spells like Deep Breath and Oppressive Roar to maintain the uptime on that buff. Now that your character is set up, we can talk about rotation. Unlike many other healers, the sequence of abilities you use as Evoker is very, very important in order to activate your spell combos. Evoker's healing is not a set in stone rotation, it's much more like a toolkit where you have to figure out what the right spells to use in each situation. I'm going to go over the main healing spells and how you should use them now. Reversion is used for two main reasons. First, it fuels your Grace Period, Scarlet Adaptation, and Life Spark talents, passively increasing your healing and damage. Secondly, Reversion triggers golden hour. For spot healing burst damage, using an echo followed by a reversion could quickly heal the target for almost a third of the damage they just took. Your goal as a preservation is to counteract burst damage with this reversion healing in emergencies and then allow your big AoE healing to get people topped. Echo and then reversion is also a great combo to use on the tank when they're taking heavy damage or just simply any DPS who gets hit by something big. Similar to reversion, dream breath is just a heal over time that you want to maintain on your allies. Generally, you want to just use rank 1 Dream Breath on as many allies as possible when it's available. In an emergency though, you can fully channel the Dream Breath in order to get a big upfront heal, but only if you have no other healing tools available. Spirit Bloom is your main big heal. It's prioritized for group healing when it's fully charged. Because of its short cooldown, you can often just use it at rank 1 if you need to spot heal a player. Remember that the amount healed doesn't go up with each rank, simply the number of players healed. You can also apply an Echo before a Spirit Bloom heal if the target needs extra healing and you think reversion isn't enough. The Echo only copies the first Bloom, it's not going to make the Spirit Bloom bounce to other players if you're echoing the initial cast. Living Flame can be used as a heal, but only as a last resort. Living Flame isn't particularly mana efficient or a big heal. It's fine to throw out just to like top somebody before heavy damage or an emergency if you have really nothing, but in general this shouldn't be something that you're using to heal with frequently. Get out of the habit of thinking you need like a go-to single target healing button to press, that's just simply not really how Evoker is going to work. Echo causes your next spell to duplicate on whoever you place the Echo on. If you have the time to cast and the essence available, you should generally pre-cast Echo before any of the main healing abilities that I listed, especially Spirit Bloom or Reversion to increase their potency. Echo does not work with all Evoker abilities. Things like Dispel or Time Dilation cannot be Echoed. Temporal Anomaly or TA places a small shield and a small echo on every ally that it passes through. Because we don't care as much about the potency of reversion, the main purpose of TA is to double up our reversions and then also our dream breaths. For bigger targeted heals or like burst AoE healing, we prefer to use manually placed single echoes because they're stronger. However, if you need to dish out large group healing in a whim, TA can be used. Now that you have the basic spells and echo combos down, it's time to get to the real juice. 
Verdant Embrace is kind of a strange spell. You dash to a target and heal them. For the purposes of this build, we're only really using it for its talent synergies. Life Bind binds whoever you Verdant Embrace on, causing 40% of the healing to be duplicated to that Link's player. This is incredibly powerful with Echo because you can Life Bind your entire team together at once, essentially increasing the potency of all the healing you do in that window by 40%. So our main AoE healing combo is this. You place Echo on 2-3 to three players depending on the situation, then as the damage is about to come in, you Verdant Embrace on a non-Echoed player or just yourself to activate Call of Ysera as well as Life Bind on your party. Fully channel a Spirit Bloom on yourself and then let it rip, and this should almost entirely full heal your party. This is your main answer to almost any AoE burst damage, and you can power through almost any mechanic with this up to a very high level. After you use it, you can then consume your Ysera buff by using a rank 1 Dream Breath to help keep everyone topped. It would take way too long to go over every combo or interaction in this video. I want to give a huge shout out to the website spiritbloom.pro. This is run by one of the mods in the Preservation Discord and is an incredibly thorough listing of preservation interactions. If you're wondering to yourself how certain combos work together, scroll through that site and you'll almost definitely find an answer. It's fully up to date with all the different hero talent stuff. Talking about spell combos is a good time to segue into our cooldown, specifically Stasis. Stasis is your main healing cooldown with several different uses. Once you activate Stasis, it records the next three defensive spell casts that you use. Then you can press Stasis again to immediately fire off those same three spells with the same targets and the same empower level again. The possibilities with Stasis are pretty much endless, but I'll go over three of my main Stasis combos. As mentioned earlier, you can full heal your party simply with Burden Embrace plus Spirit Bloom. If I think I need to do a ton of burst healing over a short time, I'll activate Stasis, place VE, fully activate Spirit Bloom, and then single charge a Dream Breath. This allows me to just immediately activate my full party heal again in the next 30 seconds whenever it's needed. I just need to put up a couple echoes and then press Stasis. You can also simply activate Stasis in an emergency for single target healing, Echo, Reversion, Spirit Bloom, VE, literally anything. If you have a tank that's just taking a ton of damage or a DPS player who has a mission to unalive themselves, just press stasis as you spam them and you can reactivate that later if needed. Stasis has an extremely short cooldown, so don't really worry about using it. Lastly, you can also pair stasis with the spells. Because Cauterizing Flame and Naturalize don't go on cooldown unless they remove something, you can use them back to back. If you know a big debuff or bleed is about to go out on your whole party, simply press stasis, then dispel three people when they have no debuff. Then, once the debuff is applied, dispel somebody, then activate your stasis, and it'll remove the debuffs from four party members. You can almost single-handedly negate lethal mob and boss mechanics with this if you have the foresight to set it up beforehand. Quickly, and to wrap up spell combos, another important spell is Emerald Communion. This does an absolute crap ton of healing on you when it's channeled, and you can also, with the talent or hover, use it while moving. The most important combo here is Emerald Communion with Life Bind. If you manually set up Echo on each of your party members, then press Verdant Embrace, you're going to have Life Bind on everybody. Then you can press Emerald Communion, and it does an absolute ton of healing over that four seconds to your entire party. Remember, you can even use this while you're stunned or disoriented or silenced. Into cooldowns, tip the scales fully empowers an ability as an instant cast. It's a great oh no button when you have heavy movement and you can't fully channel a spirit bloom. Generally for newer players, I'd probably recommend saving tip the scales for exactly this moment since it can bail you out of tough situations. However, the Chrono Warden tree does give you a haste and group damage buff when you press that tip the scales. This means for optimal output, you want to be pressing it very often and not holding onto it. So as you become more experienced, you can start Start trying to activate tip the scales every time it's available just to keep that buff rolling. Lastly, Rewind is an effective group cooldown if it's well-timed. It reverses the damage your party took over the last five seconds. Try not to be too greedy with this. Just send it early to make sure it's starting to heal up allies before they dip too low. Similar to Tip the Scales, this is great to use in spots where you need to move a lot and you can't stop to fully cast the Spirit Bloom. Just remember, it is going to take a little bit of time to kick in. So like I said, you want to use it early and often.
As for DPSing as a healer, it's actually very, very simple. On AoE, you charge up your Flame Breath and then let it go. On single target, you can just minimum empower it. Since charging up your Flame Breath doesn't add damage, it simply just adds Leaping Flame Bounces. Then spam Living Flame <laughs> until your Flame Breath is back. There's really like not many modifications you can make. That's like 95% of your DPS. Deep Breath can be used every two minutes on like bigger packs. Disintegrate simply doesn't do very much damage. A lot of people wonder why you don't press it. Unless you have all the talents that are buffing it it's not worth pressing even then it's just a very small damage gain generally you should only be taking the disintegrate talents if you're worried about mana and then you can press disintegrate for mana because not only are you gaining it but it also doesn't cost mana to dps with I want to go over some of the utility in this section also. Your Drakthir racials are great for disrupting mobs and stopping casts. Keep in mind, these won't work on like champion mobs or bosses, but they're good for like small packs of casters. Hover is a key mobility that launches you in a direction you're moving, and with the Chrono Warden talent tree, it actually acts as a blink. You can also cast certain spells while moving after it, and also with the talent, it gives you a short DR. It's kind of like an all-in-one, does a bunch of different things. The spells you can cast while moving don't include empowered spells, only really like living flame and temporal anomaly i find myself using hover more for movement rather than just like casting while moving just to get from point a to point b but it obviously depends on the situation oppressive roar is actually really really powerful as a team combo it increases stun duration on the mobs that it's on you can use this by yourself if you want to follow it up with the deep breath stun but it's even better comboing with your team when they have stuff like leg sweep or kidney shot with the talent it also removes enrages i'm not going to go over each ability and how to use every single thing in every single talent. I just wanted to highlight some of the important ones and I'll let you discover the rest. Generally in guides, I go over what consumables should be brought to dungeons or raids. The most important things that you want to have for preservation in dungeons are flasks of tempered aggression for crit, Elgari mana potions, Elgari health potions, and then also silent footfall potions for invisibility. There's a ton of profession stuff in this expansion. It's like totally ballooned since Dragonflight. There's so many different little enchants and random things that you can use to improve your performance. It's honestly just like way too much to go over in a video, but what I will do is link to a consumable guide as part of the wowhead guide from volk in the description of this video it goes over every single little enchant by name it has some like cheaper alternatives it'll just be way easier for you guys to use this guide rather than me reading it off in a video between the guy who wrote this guide volk and then herrick who is the owner of spiritbloom.pro these are probably the two people i've learned the most from in terms of preservation over the last couple years so a very big shout out goes to them and that covers everything I wanted to say for an intro guide on playing Evoker and Mythic Plus. I hope this information was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer them best I can. If I do end up playing Evoker in like really high keys by the end of the season, I want to put out a more advanced guide halfway through the season where I cover some specific like min maxing stuff and how to beat some of the more tougher bosses. If that's something that you're interested in, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching friends and happy keying.